and without much explanation we started coming out with the Quebec flag okay there was a small explanation that we moved to Quebec so we could be closer to the United States <laughs> but me and Savon eventually won the tag championships together okay alright so uh, <laughs> I, lo- I love these little uh, these little storyline inputs like uh yeah, we we, we 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 moved to Quebec uh, with the air quotes, and um, you know, so we. It can was be- about, a, about a twenty second pre tape backstage where we explained why we had the flags. That I think while we were explaining why we had the new flag, that uh, Eugene was like walking around in the background. You know, it was really a segment for him. <laughs> uh, we, I love that guy, Nick Dinsmore. He is hilarious. Uh, he is one kind of special guy. <laughs> yeah. Special E. <laughs> He's great. Um, okay, so now you you got the tag championships. Takes a little bit a little bit past that when you you guys drop the titles and um, and then you got the whole uh, the Iron Man Rob Conway. Well, it became the Con Man. The Con Man. Yeah, which, because uh, the Iron Man's what I had been in OVW, but, mm-hmm. you know, there was a lot of red tape probably for them to try to, you know, get that copyrighted at the time, so we yeah. just went with Con Man. It was just a way for me to talk about myself in third person. Because <laughs> that never happens in wrestling. <laughs> no, 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 no backstage interviews are ever someone talking in third person. Um which I, I think R- Ric Flair started. Uh, I don't know about started that, but he excelled in that. And I think The Rock, uh, the, the Rock kind of uh, showed him up. Yeah, I think The Rock kind of made it where it was cool to talk in the third person. Yeah, The Rock <laughs> made a lot of things cool. <laughs> pie cool. Yeah, everything with him was cool. So now, um, who who'd you say that he was the, your favorite person to ever wrestle? people see Eugene as the you know the the goofy character that he played on TV and not realizing how good he really was and how intelligent he was in this business um, I, I guess you you can you of all people know uh, how, how special and important he was in this business yeah I mean his, his real style is more like a kind of a, a Malenko Benoit Regal those are the guys that he really looked up to and emulated their styles. But during developmental, you know, I mean, he was known as a great technical wrestler, but they thought he was missing something, and they and they just couldn't put their finger on it. And then, so he started letting his hair grow out and just thought, well, whatever I'm doing is not working, so I'm going to do the exact opposite. Stop shaving. Stop cutting his hair. <laughs> and he actually got an opportunity to get in front of Vince and they they had him and a couple other guys pitch ideas for themselves right. and he came up with the idea of the Eugene character it was just a little bit different his idea was it to be more like the Rain Man movie mm-hmm. where the guy was a wrestling savant who you know he wasn't really didn't have a great aptitude outside of wrestling but he could watch wrestling and immediately pick up all the moves and so be like a the, the Malenko or Benoit style mm-hmm. but only in wrestling and maybe not really know how to get to the building <laughs> but once he's there he can watch it and emulate everybody else and then they kind of took that and you know tweaked it and made it you know even more entertaining, I think, and Nick did a great job of portraying that role. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he did did everybody's finishing moves, and he was he was yeah, and entertaining was uh, definitely a uh, word to yeah. And him. his debut as Eugene was against me. Wow, wow, I didn't even know that. Yeah, 
there, you know, as, as Rob Conway from La Resistance, because like two weeks previous to his debut, I was wrestling Rhino, and he came out and like set the pyro off and distracted me, and then I got gored. No. So they, I went after him backstage, and Johnny Nitro slash John Morrison was the acting general manager and made a match for me and Eugene for, you know, two weeks from tonight. Nice. So I, so I got to, you know, me and, me and him had wrestled each other in that warehouse hundreds of times, you know, <laughs> and now his debut on Raw is against me, so it made it a lot of fun. That's, that's cool. Kind of felt like it was, it was meant to be. Uh, had that gore feel from Rhino, because that guy's like a, a house. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he don't have any problems, uh, you know, not getting up from it, put it that way. <laughs> He's a big dude. He's uh, he's funny though. I, we we had a interview with Rhino. He's uh, he's a really cool, down to earth guy. Very very soft spoken for a big man. <laughs> yeah, he reminds me of the the movie star Jack Black for some reason. He's just really <laughs> funny, and you know you don't really get to see that side of him on television. But he's a really uh, you know a good guy, but very very you know very funny dude. Yeah. Um, you have any question? Uh, yeah, my question was, um, what really motivated you in the business to keep going as long as you did? Well, I hope you mean as long as I am. Yeah, still, I know. Still. Well, yeah, as long as, you, as long as you are going. Well, I just, I mean, I, I'm an athlete, so I mean, that's what I've done my whole life for the most part, is it went from basketball to to kind of bodybuilding into wrestling and you know it's, you're just always trying to get better you know physically better trying to you know even with wrestling I'm not somebody that just goes and kind of goes through the motions or has a routine I mean hopefully after you know close to 19 years now that I'm getting better instead of worse so I mean that's what motivates me is that that's what I like to do and I like to watch last night I had a match last night and, you know, while I was doing cardio at the hotel before I went to the arena, I watched uh, Flair versus Steamboat from 1989 when they got the judges. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, I mean, and it's still, I just love to watch it. So watching it makes me more fired up about going and doing it. So. Hmm. Now, that brings me to my question was 19 years, you know, in the business, uh, still love watching it, obviously still in the ring competing. Uh, at 43 years old, will you know and will you admit to yourself at that point when enough is enough? I mean, I hope that, that I'm done with wrestling before it's done with me. Right. You know, <laughs> but I don't want to get out of the business of wrestling because I enjoy helping the newer guys, you know, you know, whether it be learning how to actually do the moves in wrestling or you know where and when to do them and why to do them <laughs> and to see them you know go out and get the reaction that they want is is fun for me so I don't really see myself getting out of it completely at any point but that's <laughs> a lot of times you know fans or you know people in the industry will be like man I can't believe that this guy still wrestles and it's like the reason he wrestles is come people still want to see him do it and pe- somebody still wants to pay to see him do it so if you had another occupation if you were you know a lawyer or a doctor you know those guys make a lot of money right but why don't they retire earlier because they can still do it and people still want to pay them to do it and they still are good at it because you could be the thousandth best best lawyer in the country and you're still a good lawyer right. so I mean you know if you're one of the top, you know, three or four hundred wrestlers, you know, that's, that's still pretty good. No, I agree. I agree with you there. Now, do you still have dreams of possibly getting back to the WWE? You know, the WWE's really not been something that I've thought about now for probably about five or six years. Once I, you know, I think the best thing you could do when you leave the WWE is to just move on. And if you want to still wrestle, just wrestle. And if that happens, it happens. But you can't, like, dwell on the past or, like, work hard to get back to something. You just got to move forward. And, you know, being a 
current something is more fulfilling than dwelling on being a form or something else. So once I got, you know, almost four years ago, I went from just being, you know, doing normal independence to getting back with the NWA, which is where I kind of started, mm-hmm. and trying to help them rebuild, uh, you know, and get and, and that's really worked out for me and for them. And that got me to New Japan. Uh, and it's together we've kind of raised the visibility of the NWA again, and it's got me an opportunity to build relationships with some of the legendary, you know, wrestlers from the past that made their careers in the NWA. So right now that's been my main focus is we have 30 promotions across the country, but we don't have one, and, and a lot of them have local TV, and we don't have one centralized television. So the NWA is probably, you know, it's by far the largest employer of wrestlers as mm-hmm. far as doing shows. I figure if we have 30 promotions, if they only did one show a month and they had 20 wrestlers, that's right. more shows than anybody else is doing other than the WWE. So it's just, it doesn't get the kind of publicity that I think it deserves because we don't have one television show. Gotcha. There's other shows that have TV nationally, but they don't really have house shows. We always have, we have hundreds of live events a year. We don't have one centralized TV. So that's, that's my goal is whether it's me in a wrestling capacity or as an announcer or an interviewer or as any type of a producer is to concentrate on getting you know, what I'm working with now, the NWA, to get them more na- nationwide television. Okay. Or, you know, online. It doesn't have to be network TV. It could be Netflix or, you know, yeah. something for masses to be able to see it and enjoy it and it'd be easily to access. Yeah, well, it's day with the internet. You, know, you, don't even, you don't even need to own a TV anymore. I mean, you get these uh, your computer and smart TVs and just you can go online and watch whatever you want, so... Uh, to watch it online would be just as good as just turning on the television. Yeah. And, you know, I think the thing that's most exciting about watching wrestling is if you can, if the, if you have the possibility of doing it live. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter if it's, like, online or if it's on television. But, you know, when it's live, you, you know, in order for someone to put it on a spoiler, they have to watch it. Right. So I think that that's why Raw has been so much more successful over the years than other shows because it's live and what you see is what you get. Right. And I, I think that's kind of why SmackDown needed to go live because it, they would be live on Tuesday, non televised, and then recorded and showed on a Thursday. And by the time Wednesday rolled around, everybody knew the results because of the internet. Absolutely. So why why watch it? You know, <laughs> why watch it? You know, if I recorded Game Seven tonight of the NBA playoffs, I mean, it would be almost impossible for me to watch it tomorrow without somebody telling me what happened. Yep. You know, you can't watch Twitter, Facebook. Somebody's going to stooge it off. So live, live is exciting. Yeah, I I agree with that. I absolutely. Yeah, I, I could never, I could never watch. Uh, a recorded game and like the next day and hope that nobody told me what happened. It would be it would be it literally would be impossible because who's texting your phone you know out of and you know being happy or sad because of what happened or like you said Twitter or Facebook or just somebody it's walking in your everything. house. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be hard to watch Game of Thrones. I have to watch it sometime tonight because I can't go on social media without someone. Yep. <laughs> mentioning it, you know, same way Walking Dead, the show, you might oh my God, it, yeah. but you gotta watch it pretty soon or you can't look at the internet because somebody, you know, is gonna say so and I can't believe so and so died. It's like, come on, man, keep it yeah. yourself. No, exactly right. That's why, like, even like, if there's a night where uh, I DVR Raw, uh, just in case if there's a night I get home late, I literally will shut my phone off. <laughs> Until I get home and, and I, I watch it from the beginning, and once I once I catch up to the live feed, I'll turn my phone back on. <laughs> but even that's hard. <laughs> even that's hard to do. So, um, all right. So let me let me give you a couple quick questions. And um, we, we asked you about your most favorite in the ring. Now, who would you say was probably the worst person in the ring? And and I don't mean like if they were a bad wrestler. Maybe you just guys had bad chemistry. Nathan Jones. Oh my god, that guy was huge. That guy was a monster. Yeah, but you, you can't really do much with him. He was just really big and really strong, and 